So just a quick reminder, um, last session we, 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 we started with the Monte Carlo Markov chain of Markov chain Monte Carlo. I never know which, in which way you said it. Uh, so this, this chapter was more uh, the goal. It, it was like mostly trying to help us build some kind of uh, understanding of how it works under the wood without uh, showing us how it works. Like it's basically like we will use like the Metropolis Asting algorithm and also a bit the Monte Carlo algorithm to have like to draw some kind of analogy with the other tool uh, that have that are used uh, for like this uh, well for classical for this. Um, um goal so the goal is usually like we are trying to approximate posterior distribution without knowing because that's why we are trying to uh, approximate it and sample into this approximation to get close to the posterior uh, distribution why is it hard is because sometimes when you have like a bunch of parameters you need to do difficult math or at least too difficult for a bunch of us that's why we are using these tools. Um, I will just remember to you like there's currently two kind of uh, tools using R, which is STAN and JAGS, and both of their implementation, which is Air STAN and Air JAGS, that use different kind of uh, MCMC under the hood. JAGS use a JIP sampler. It's it, it's named J J JAGS stands for just another Gibbs samplers and Stan, I have no idea, but it used like an Hamiltonian uh, Monte Carlo uh, process instead of the Metropolis testing or the Gibbs sampler. This is not no big deal and just a quick remember. So here yeah, the goal is to remember, uh, to, to get like some feeling how, how it works under the woods. But we'll not go like uh, into the Metropolis, uh, the Hamiltonian one and the Gibbs sampler in the, into this box. Okay, so like usual, we'll play with two examples. The one is normal, normal bottom, and the next one will be a beta uh, binomial model. Feel free like to stop me. Like I don't see you like I have, uh, but like feel free to stop me or whatever speak if something is not clear or if it's if it's bad. So on this diapo, like the next one, the big ID one, like. Uh, so we will start with the normal normal model, which is defined like uh, so. Let's say like we want to to get a feeling of something that's, that's around three, and we uh, and it's defined by a normal distribution, which always defined by a mean and standard deviation. Uh, and the mean here is also defined by another normal model, a normal uh, distribution defined by uh, a mean of zero and. Uh, as a standard deviation. So the data we get is just one observed outcome, that's 6.25. Uh, so uh, here we are pretending that we cannot use the conjugate uh, family to calculate it, uh, So, but we can, in fact, doing it. But the, the main idea is like playing or pretending that we cannot to just implement uh, the metropolis as things algorithm so to remind you the idea of a chain I, I i i like the idea of a random walk because it keeps the idea like where you are but uh the chain uh the idea is like you will visit the distribution that you want to visit by walking to it or going to it so and why uh why is it good like to have the idea of a random work like imagine like if you are in the middle of like let's say like a football or soccer uh, field you are in the middle of it then you move and the distribution in, is around the whole the soccer field and you move you can either move right or left and uh, you want to move like in some let's say you move to the left uh, like randomly you decide to move to the left then uh, you you will like the position where you are will depend where you were before. This is like what this is like what I have right here. Remember, like the new position on the chain or where you are in the random walk depend only 
on the previous position. This is not true, we will see it for the, for the Metropolis algorithm, but it is mostly true for a real like uh, MCMC methods. So how are we be sure and how we know that we are going to visit every part of the posterior distribution? Well, this, this is done by two steps. The step one usually is quite easy. Like we will propose a way to run, to move randomly. Uh, in the book, they use the use they use the mu um, ticks. I I prefer the mu proposal, so I will use the mu proposal. So this is like we will decide like uh, not moving. We just say like okay, I will maybe move to these places, and then according to the place we are, uh, I mean according to this prospective place, this proposal will go to step two. But the first step is like trying to see where we will land, the new proposal. The step two is deciding whether we'll go to these places, so we will accept the proposal to be the next place where mu is, or we will stay at the current location. So the next step will be like where we were, and then rise again. Step one, we decide to move or not, etc., etc., etc. So, uh, a basic implementation of that is the Monte Carlo algorithm. Like on these cases, for example, the normal, normal model, we know uh, by the conjugate families uh, ID, the uh, um, probability density function, we know it. So we can just sample into it and go there every time. And it will like produce, uh, if we produce enough sample, the same uh, distribution because we are drawing into it. But it's kind of like, let's say, this is cheating. So because like this is, this is what we want to estimate it, to approximate it. Sorry. So what? So what can we do other way? Like you have two tricks that we can use. I, I call them tricks, but like uh, this is this is not tricks. This is like very good idea for the people who have them. <laughs> but uh, so what we know, even if we don't know the posterior density function. What we know is like the posterior is proportional to the prior time the likelihood. What we don't know and what it's hard is like the normalizing constant. I don't know if you remember, like in the bias theorem, like we have like three parts, the prior, the likelihood, and the normalizing constant. So everything sums to one. And uh, but the, the shape of the function, uh, the distribution is still the same. So what the, the idea is, is we will use another distribution here, uh, um, a uniform distribution. That's will a uniform distribution uh, just get two parameters because it's uniform on everything ranging from the places A from the places B, let's say. Here, you, this will be like around mu and it will be like uh, the distances will be uh, W for weight. As, as drawn here. So let's say like if mu in the random process, in the random, in the chain we are at mu, let's say three, uh, we'll decide that we can move from minus, mu minus one and mu plus one. So from two to four. And as you can see, like you can overlap kind of, this is like just to give an idea, uh, where like the whole distribution of this uniform distribution land, and then you can ever decide it to accept yes or no. So this this uh, idea, like this first trick, help us like uh, to do step one. Instead of drawing on the um, posterior that we want to know, we will use another distribution that's kind of blind to draw into it, and I will go. And it's, this is convenient because like the uniform distribution provide us uh, a posterior density function that's, that's summed to one divided by two uh, W because like it can be like every value from two to four uh, here if you, uh, if you put like uh, it. So this, this is, this is a easy to do. Okay, then the Metropolis has thing. It's, it's step one is down. We, we have like a way to, to sample. Now what we are trying to do is like, how do we 
you know, we know how we can move. You know, we need to know like if we have to move or not. So uh, for that, I thought this was a good bit. What? Sorry. Uh, I, I thought this was a good bit because there was yeah there's something in uh, in it where it posited that um, if it if you only move to a, a more acceptable place on the distribution like with a higher probability it would yeah. just kind of like go around the top um, but uh, doesn't it kind of go so it, it, if it's a higher probability it will go there but if it's a lower probability it goes to this ex this acceptance probability function currently we are not moving we are still like trying to form proposal but you are right like next the next step is like are we moving or not the the first the first step the first week was like uh how do we decide to move let's say and then you're right the next step is are we deciding to move or not and then uh this is kind of tricky and i i will have a quiz a bit later like because Currently, like the author gives us the W, but how do you decide it? How do you decide, like, uh, if you take too big, if you take one that is too big, you will explore, like, way too much spaces. And you will, if you want to have, like, a correct ID, you will need to move a lot, let's say, like, to, to, uh, to process the chain a lot. But if you take a too small, um, on, on these cases, and too small mm -hmm. W, you will never move. Or you will like just explore like a, a teeny bit yeah. of the posterior. But to be fair with you and like they didn't go too much into that in the chapter. Okay, but yeah, you're right, I think. And uh, I agree with you. We are so I like the term like what we are going to to know if we move, we are going to calculate alpha, which is the acceptance probability. Which is like so we'll do some things that range from one we need to move and zero we don't move and this is defined by um the function uh or I, I miss a mean here this should be the minimum between one the first term and this whole equation <laughs> if you are a bit lost about it this is just like the priors time the likelihood time the new uh, probability density function and you have it from the proposal, so the new place where we will maybe go, and from the place where we are. So what we are going to see is like as a like the um, the so like if I if I go back here, this is just and as I go back, yeah, this is uh, not here. Where is it? Sorry, I haven't defined it here. Uh, here, this is just like we do. We do know that the um, we do know that that. So this is just like the function of new time the likelihood. And here on this huge alpha equation, which I missed the mean here before, like the the bracket. Uh, this is the same uh, function. So this is we will try to get the function of the the new new the new proposal versus the likelihood of the proposal versus the data, uh, knowing the data, sorry, times a probability density function divided by uh, the other option, because we have two options, either we move or we stay, which is like the function of the already known mu times the likelihood of mu knowing the data. So this, this, this sounds a bit complicated, but it can be simplified. Uh, I have an error also here. This is like um, the, the, but you can, this is not a big deal because like, <laughs> so the Q, ta, the, the disparity function of mu, knowing the mu du proposal divided by the uh, new proposal divided mu. I don't know if it's clear. I should, no, I can't draw, but I will. Uh, it's, it's because it's symmetric, it's the same. Yeah, you see it on the next line. So we can just erase it. I will have to correct it, but and it's it's one. So when you multiply by one, it's the same. So this is one step that make you simplify. Then the author use a trick like I will never guess it. Like if you multiply by the function of y, you can simplify it. And at the end, we just have the function of new the place you want to go, the proposal, 
knowing y divided by the function of mu, uh, the function when you are now, I mean, the, the, the place where you are not knowing y. And this, even if we don't know these two terms, we know that the ratio is equivalent to the unnormalized posterior. Don't ask me why. I haven't understand it, but if you understand, feel free. Uh, so this help us because like we have no two scenario. As well, like this ratio is greater than one, then the mean, then with the mean we'll pick one. So one red person in terms of probability we are moving. Or if, oh, I have failed in the, the equation, as well, uh, if this function uh, is inferior, the, the ratio is inferior to one, then what we get is an alpha and then relating um, if the alpha is low we will be likely to move and if it's higher we'll uh, we, sorry we'll be likely not to move and if it's close to one we'll be likely to move but it's not this is a probability this is a stochastic this is stochastic this is probability uh this is why like uh in the code we are setting seeds so we are sure that uh we get the same results but it could be like because it's probabilistic, it could be another result. So this is an implementation. So this is, I, I, I think this is quite easy, but like, let, let me read with you. We'll first, so this is a function for every W, W is like the range uh, away from the mu we are taking and the current places where we start, we can, uh, we'll, we'll do various stuff. The first one is like trying to see the proposal, what I call new proposal. For that, we are using the uni we are drawing into the uniform distribution. This is what the air unif uh, function do. We are doing just one draw, and uh, this is the uniform. So we need to set up the mean and the max, which is the same that the function we write before. This is the first step. So now we have a proposal. No, the next step is saying like, do this proposal uh, is interesting to visit to get the correct shape of the posterior or it's not interesting. So for that, we are like, this is the denormal proposal uh, zero one is the prior. Uh, and then we are multiplying with the likelihood. So this is the density instead of run um, of this ten for densities. Uh, so it's it's allow us to get the whole distribution. So this is why it's uh, and the, the same from the likelihood, and we get it for like the proposal, which is the new version, and the current, which is the oldest version. And then we calculate alpha the same way. Like so, this is as well, we take the mean of one or the ratio of these two terms, and then we sample into it. This is like. A random component. This is this is why it's uh, it, so. By doing that, like let's say, like we have zero alpha is zero point three. In in three time out of ten, we'll maybe move, and it uh, it's seven time out of ten, we'll not move. Uh, to simplify it, and then we return a data frame, and that's it. This is one iteration of it. So you get you get this iteration. Everything's fine. So I think it's it's like to 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 go back on the discussion we had with Frederica before. Uh, it's good like to identify like what part of the code is a prior and what part is a likelihood. And when you start understanding it, I feel at least for myself, it makes stuff a bit easier. Okay, so now we have done it once, so we are moving once, let's say, uh, and every time like yeah you. So how do we record it for like when we knew we are moving more than once? So this is like we set up another function. This function like starts with setting up a current position. This can be added at the function, I feel, but here the, I just take the one of the, the book. Then uh, we, we, set up, we initialize a, a vector to avoid like drawing it. And then um, we will do a for loop um the, the the number of time we are doing it so the number n and every loop we will like uh, record one of the function we have done before so 
if like for example and then we we save it uh in a data frame position uh, recording it everything this is not that complicated i feel so but feel free if something like is unclear uh inside this so you this is just the part that you should not forget like you you need to initialize the current position if you are moving or not so the, but yes this is yeah, classic yeah, sorry, sure. I, I might have a question. Um, basically about the four, okay. So basically I'm calculating one, uh, the, the sim. Uh, yes. With this one uh, MH iteration. Yes. On W and current. So this yes. will build. Uh, w W is defined on the function, so on the calling the function, it's one of the arguments. And current is it's 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 defined, it's predefined. It's three basically, the first one. Okay. Uh, then yeah. let, let's go back here. So this oh uh, no, maybe this will give you proposal and the next stop. Okay. So now we go back to this one. Next stop can be the new current if it's accepted. Mm -hmm. So in this case of the previous one, like I'm switching, uh, two point nine was very close to three. I mean, it was the alpha was like zero point eighty two, so it was accepted in this case. So we are moving on the next stop. So in this function, the next stop become mu. And uh, the current, and we update new and the current. We update two step by the next step. This is the same. We could have like added shortcut, but I like it's being separated because it makes stuff more readable. And then we are adding it to a data frame, doing an iteration. We are combining uh, every vision, every version to it. Is it better? Um, yeah, no, I have a, uh, basically when I, I have the sim ready, I'm starting to build up my mu. Yeah. Uh, each uh, element uh, from uh, one to n. Yes. But where are these elements? Where are these elements? Where are these elements? So basically, the, the sim. The, yeah. The mu is updated on the the um, year. You create you you are you are first uh, um, an, a force um, you you initialize two stuff at the beginning of the function before the loop where you start the currents okay. and the mu and the mu will will grow a vector will grow vectors that have, will have the length of n see it, it starts by creating a, a zero uh, times n like let's say you have put 10 here you will have 10 value of o of zero and then in the for loop you will replace uh, every uh, mu value by uh, one of the product of sim the next stop And this will generate a data frame that will contain every value of mu and the number of the iteration. I don't know if I could write something. I could, maybe it will be better. Let's see if I can write on Zoom. Is it good or should? There, there's a, the annotation bar on top. Uh, there is the, um, the annotation bar on top of the presentation. Are you are you seeing like uh, this untitled document? Yeah. Okay. So let's 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 go slowly. So current is three before the loop. Up mu. Let's say on the function uh, we have called it mh star. Uh, we have called it with let let's do something simple ten. And uh, this is not this is one because just 
So now we are initializing the function. The function is starting. Line current equal three. Okay. Mu will be uh, well will be like a replication of zero from ten, which is basically like will be something like zero 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 etc etc ten times. Now we are calling, we are starting the loop. So the loop is from one to 10 because this is N. Uh, yeah, I should, I should write it, it will be better. Is it, is it big enough? I can, I can probably, yeah. it, uh, I don't know how to increase the size, should I increase the size somewhere, is it possible? No, I don't know. And uh, this is W, okay. Then, yeah, sorry, then we are starting the loop. First iteration. Uh, we are calling the function one mh iteration with the value w that is here and the current. So let's do it. One mh uh, iteration with the value w, which here is one. And uh, the current here, it's three. Up. This will return. Let's say I, I will. I will just take the same example. This this going to sim. Sim have like it's currently a data frame uh, with three parameter with three um, sorry column. We are just interested by the sim next stop, which I will say is two point nine just because like I know it from before. So we will provide mu one. So here first it's one. Mu to one will be 2.1. And we'll update current. Current become 2.9. Then we end this loop. We move to uh, two out of 10. Sim uh, will change, will be like one uh, call of it iteration <laughs> W no change. And current will be now 2.1, 2.9, oops. Then uh, I will invent the numbers, okay? <laughs> Let's say, uh, Mu was, uh, uh, so let's say like in sim, the sim next stop was uh, mm, two point, uh, let's say 3.1. So let's say we will accept that. I don't know. But I, so it's mu two becoming uh, 3.1. Uh, we are accepting that. So this is 3.1. Okay. No, we move like in the another one. And this time I will just copy past to save myself because I'm lazy. Uh, this is changing. This is 3.1. And now uh, let's say this provides us with something very well. Uh, Four point five. Okay, let's say uh, it's three yeah. here. This is not accept, let's say we will not accept it. So current uh, will still say 3.1 because this is all the one MH iteration is defined. We will not accept it. Like I can go back here. See here, the next stop uh, will not be accepted. It will sample uh, instead of sample proposal, it will get current. So we will start 3.1, which was the current at this time. And so if I reopen my pad, uh, we are staying here. And then on four to 10, here we are. So this is still the same. And now uh, let's say we are doing like let's say 3.6, and this is accepted. 
So we are getting it. But obviously we are not doing like four times or 10 times, we are doing it like five, five uh, thousand. Is it, is it, is it good, uh, Frederica? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. no big deal, it's super hard. So, and it's, it's good like sometimes in this kind of situation to do it by hand. So that's it. But not, but not 5,000 times. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> well, I, I remember in my young time when I was using Excel, I could have been something as stupid than that. Uh, okay. So now we are doing it another time. So I just copy past the example. So we are calling this function 5,000 times. The W is still the same and we are plotting it. So we, imagine you are in the middle of this soccer field and we are like moving as though going like through the goal of the team blue and the goal to the team A, which is this soccer field is the distribution we are trying to approximate. And if you check the simulation, so this is just like, uh, this is, so we are producing a simulation. So this, this produces a data frame uh, with a bunch, with 5,000 uh, row of mu. Uh, you can uh, plot it. This is like the histogram and do it also with the, you can also plot the statistical functions that we know because like, as we, as I would say, we are pretending we don't know the normal, normal distribution, uh, which is in blue. So we see like this approximation is good. Okay. Now it's time for a quiz. <laughs> so I've just told it. So as, as I already said, like the W was fixed. Now uh, I'm going to ask you which plots, uh, oh, so it's wrong. There's one plot who is like the W is 100. It's so it's let's say W is uh, this is wrong. I will write it. I will get my my notepad. And so the option you have is W is one. This one is easy. W is 100. So we are moving a lot. And W is one po work one. And uh, you can pick as a, sorry, oops. This one, the two one, the tau two, tau two, uh, sorry, and tau three. Which one do you prefer? Uh, so your time. Well, yeah, uh, tau three uh, is, is basically the one that people are looking to get. So when you they're tuning boring. it, that, that, that's, that's, that's the one that they want. So that's, that's the W equals one. Um, yeah. The, tour two is the uh, 0 0.01 because it's not moving around at all. Really. Yeah. It's, yeah. And the W equals 100. That's the one that looks like the New York City skyline. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. You're right. So basically like on the, uh, with the W of 0.01, we are not moving a lot. So we just stay like where we are depending of where we are, where we started, let's say, because like we are not moving a lot. Um, but when we pick 100, like we are moving a lot and we will probably reach a good one, but we will need more uh, replication. So good job. Is it fine for everyone? But I, I have no, uh, I, the author didn't explain how to pick a good W, so you can't rely on me for that. Okay, now we are going with a beta binomial uh, example, which is, uh, and the data is one success into trial. So this is like a binomial uh, distribution with two, and the P, uh, which is like the probability to get a success is defined by a beta distribution uh, with two parameters, two and three. Obviously, we are still playing pretend, so we know we can get it. Uh, here, I will say it's a bit harder because the, we cannot use the idea that Q, the new proposal, knowing new divided by the, the I mean, the, pro the probability function, density function uh, was not symmetric. So we cannot simplify. 
So instead, so this is the function that do it once time. Every time we will need to calculate the proposal Q and the Q and Q, which is like the Q uh, P and the Q P proposal. But it's basically the same. Uh, but you have like one change uh, on this model, uh, which is the real uh, Metropolis Asting model. We are not uh, taking into account where we were. So every time in this model, this, this is why like uh, we will redraw into uh, the beta. So this is the first step. Proposal egal, uh, done R beta one for A to B. And uh, we will not, we don't, we, we need, we need it to know where it starts, but uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, no, they're dated or should I pick it bad or badly understand it? See, because they are dated it. Do I, do I misunderstood it? Well, I probably misunderstood because like there is at the current location. So I misunderstood my bad. So yes, they are taking into account where we where we started. I mean the next stop, but it's basically the same idea. Like you add like one um, one inter you, you produce one function that you will uh, loop for every time you want to do it. Okay. Well, I have to read it again to be sure, but the code doesn't lie. But this is exactly the same, except like. No, we are like using a beta distribution to generate our proposal. And we are still drawing it. Okay, why the algorithm works? Well, I have no idea. But uh, I understand the main idea is that uh, the idea is like the, the arrow means like we are moving to the proposal. So the idea is like when mu is moving to the mu proposal, divided by the idea when the mu proposal is moving to the mu. This is kind of the same. I haven't do the math, I haven't understand it. That's these two functions that we are trying to get the ratio of. So every time like, uh, and the, this ratio is basically like the ratio of moving and not moving. This is why I, I I think it works, but I will let you do the, the math because I haven't understand it perfectly. Okay, to sum up, step one is like, you need to propose a way to move, or a, a, a way to propose where we moved. It should be dependent upon the current location, but I think it's not always the case. That's why I write it that way. And two is determine whether you accept this the, the moving, the proposal. And this, to make it, um, to, to accept this, um, this displacement, it depends on the posterior plausibility we are trying to get. And we are doing, to get that, we are getting some kind of ratio between the posterior plausibility related to the posterior plausibility of our current location. This is this. This is this uh, ID, like this is this first component. So, and this is all the Monte, all supposedly the old uh, Monte Carlo Markov chain works. So you are like getting an ID of like, and you are summing at the end the everything. So that's it. Or was I? <laughs> I can stop sharing, I guess. Need to control sharing. Yeah. Was it clear? Sorry for the mismatch at the end. I will verify like, um, I, I think I remember you, sh you should redraw in the same beta distribution, but I don't know why. Guys, are you dead? Yeah, I, I, it's, just, I, it's, like, it's, it's just weird. weird. Black, black heads white all over it. Oh, I stopped sharing. Yeah. There we go. Sorry. Oh, there we go. So um, that's it. Does it help you? Yeah, I mean, I think it's easier to do um, with, the, with the programming because it's not actually, the programming isn't that complicated, actually. It's easier no. to do it and and see the result and try and understand the results uh, 
than it is actually to understand the mass. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Like, just do, just use the, the functions they provide and do the for loop for small numbers. Check the results. Do this for small number. Check the results and use the same function like the, the to to see the trace and the distributions that it produces. Yeah. And you will get a feeling of it. Like I had, I had another. I have done it another way. I can try to find it. Let me see. To provide it, but I I was quick on the time because like Brandon wanted to do it, but then he didn't get time, so I I hurry up. So sorry for like I did, couldn't find cool meme to add also. So. <laughs> But okay. add them next time. <laughs> I will try. I will. I promise that I will find some. So let me see. Like I have, I've seen another implementation of it. So let's see if it's or this in code if it can help. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Course works. Start Bayesian. I think it was in sense two. Yes. Five mil. Will I be able to fund it? Uh, I will not be able to fund it. Uh, but I, I can add it later as an exercise, maybe. Yeah, I googled one of the books that they recommended. It's like the handbook of Monte, uh, so Mark of Chain Monte Carlo. Yeah. And it was like about 85 pounds. Whoa. Uh, yeah, it was like 85 pounds and it was from 2011. I think they get a digital one for 35. Um, <laughs> but even like the second hand ones were like 67. So I think that goes into all the like different sorts of different algorithms that you can use. Yeah. Like yeah, they mentioned in a, a book if you want to go deeper that was like published in 2011. So maybe it was this one. Yeah. And well, like they explain the different kind of algorithm and how you can make them. Uh, I'm trying to find it. I'm pretty sure like, I have done some, but I don't find it uh, close. But yeah, I can, I can share it like on the, I can add it to the, when I push it, correct some of my mistake and push it to the, to the, to the labs. Uh, Oh yeah, it's here. So it was two week two. So I will probably find it here. Well, it's here. It's kind of small. Yeah, it's, it's hard to, I should comment it a bit. Because like... Yeah, yeah, I, I would post it on the chat, but it's, it's a bit like, it's a while loop. I don't know, it should be commented a bit. So... Yeah, I will, I will comment it like that, but this, this is basically like using a while instead of a for loop. But because like currently, like we are relying on the fact that we will produce enough. Uh, you know, the, um, that's what we saw like with the W. So instead of uh, relying to the fact that the W is well set up, you can instead uh, doing a while where you should uh, say like, I want like, to have like a certain number of uh, parameter to be a new value, let's say if you use a new to be accepted. This is the count accepts should be like, uh, shouldn't, while this count accept is inferior to what we have, which we produce, we are keeping doing generating numbers. So I will like rework in and provide it when I get time, that's it. But yeah, you have plenty of book on how to generate I think this excites computer science people, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, they can be very excitable people, computer science people. 
I know my, bro- yeah. my brother's done computer science, so yeah. Very I'm happy. They provide us better algorithm. Okay, so that, that was it. So I, I haven't checked what's happened next time, so we should check that. Well, I think Brendan was having a panic unnecessarily. Or have you have you have you have you moved him to next week? Or was I don't he know. this week? I think we are kind of we are we are on chapter eight next week. So chapter eight will yeah. be like posterior inference and prediction. And let's see. Uh, I'm lost in this air for the descent sometimes. Signups. Yes, it's Brendan. Ooh. So we good. And next time will be normal regression. Also, if someone want to do it, mm. feel free. So okay. After Brendan. You have time to decide. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well. I will have to go. Oh, uh, it was not too bad. And everyone have understand a bit like, I think if you understand like the step one and step two principle and then rise and repeat, you get it. And then yeah. depending on the algorithm, the step one will be different and the step two will be different. But the, step, the same concept is you have, you have to be sure that you move around the whole distribution of the posterior because you don't want to miss some mm. summits. Uh, because like and you have to have a so th- these parts like you can imagine you are you can brute frost it like you can sit I move everywhere and then I check if I keep it or not keep it and then the second part of accepting it is kind of lowering the brute force you are doing it because like this is costly generating a bunch of it so having a better way of accepting or not accepting it also help you like keeping more observation and less observation and help you like like your computers give you give you computer yeah, time. I, uh, I don't think this existed before the nineties, did it, or something like that? Or at least it, it wasn't invent, used a lot. It they was, invented in the in the fifties for the. Um, that's why, like in the book, they mention like the the team like that worked in nuclear bomb. Apparently, this was developed for the um, what the name of the project, the Manhattan Project. Manhattan Project, yeah. And uh, and that's it. That this, so it was like developed uh, in the fifty, and it was popularized uh, by the. Um, I think the name of the research group. I mean, they used some computer that's cool name was Metro, I think, or Metro. I don't remember. And uh, it was like more developed in the sixties after after the Manhattan Project. Uh, I think Richard McElrath, like, which is usually like mentioned a lot, mentioned it in his video. I can add the video where he, he explained it. Also, he, a, he has a very, very good example uh, and funny example on how you should decide to move or not. So I would recommend it, watching it because it's funny and uh, it gives a good feeling of it. I will put the link uh, at the end when I publish it. I can, I, I can add it now, but... Let's uh, get a resyncing. Two thousand two thousand two. Sorry. And is way better teachers than I. Up. Loading. So I think this is uh, maybe the one before. No, I think it was this one, but like, I will put the link here. Here you are. Uh, Let me check still if it's this one. Pattern to be able to do. Yeah, this is this one. Uh, and yeah, it provide like full uh, references of the of the people who developed it. So I highly recommend it. And it's not too. I mean, it, it, this is an awesome teacher. Educators, I will say.
Okay. Well, that's it for me. See you next week. Thank you. Take care. See you next week. Bye. And like, if you have more questions, like feel free to ask in the chat, like and the uh, Air Force Science. Or if it's not clear, we are all learning, and we are all learning by answering questions. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Bye. Take care now. Cheers. Bye. Take care. Yeah.